Laurel, we recently had Andy Andrews back on the show. Always fun. I don't think we've ever had him on that at some point he doesn't find the opportunity to say, hey, the, our, our, our goal here is not to raise good kids. It's to raise good adults. And I like the perspective. And I found myself thinking about that I was, as I was reading your book. This is my gift to them to help them with money. It's my gift to the culture. It's my gift to their sanity and the kids that are going to come after them, which I already have a few grandkids here. But, wow. but yeah. as you know, like so many of our most important things in our adult life, there yeah. is no context for money in their upbringing unless we bring it to them. And that just got heavier on me as I read your book. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. And, you know, I, I started parenting as a single mom. Um, I wanted to be a mom and he didn't want to be a dad. It was pretty simple. Um, so going into single parenting, like through the pregnancy and through everything, you know, it was just that that whole journey of knowing um, Bob Proctor has been a mentor. Obviously, you know, uh, I traveled with Zig and Brian Tracy. I mean, I've just had amazing people around me in my, my development, um, Sharon Lecter's like my financial mom. All that being said is I knew when I had my kids that I was raising a man. And I know that single women get a lot of heat for raising little boys and, you know, and coddling them and not really raising them with a lot of values and strength and character. And I just knew going into this that, you know, super mom was going to be my thing, you know, that I, I was going to break generational wealth. I'm a farm girl from Nebraska, uh, never learned any of this. At 17, Dennis Waitley gave me the book, Think and Grow Rich. So you can imagine farm girl from Nebraska reading, Think yeah. and Grow Rich, going, like, there's people that think, like, this is a whole new world. And so from then, you know, it was just a, a really big committed decision to raise really responsible adults. So I agree. I think it's, I think parenting is such a serious job. Uh, and not taken seriously enough. Well, and what I'm going to, you know, I'll go back and do the intro to this show. And I'm going to say, we all think we know about mm -hmm. money, but I yeah. feel like not, you know, I'm not a big fan of, you know, the next book that talks about the secrets and whether there are any secrets out there, but I do feel like you bring us back to something that we have just, I was going to say either lost, but maybe we are just still never there. We think of, okay, here's our kid. We're going to get him a good education, whether it's formal yep. education or otherwise. Yep. And get a good job. Yeah. Okay. What does that mean? I, I think right there. Let's start right there. So this is just uh, you, you know at the base level as everybody's listening yeah. here. All the parents are listening, and we want them to get a good job. What does that mean? Right. Well, there. so therein lies the problem. Yeah. <laughs> therein lies the problem is that the and I traveled six continents teaching this work. So in principle, I teach in U.S. terms. I'm married to a Canadian. Just want right. to give that preface to that, but. Um, as I, you know, take this on, I have one slide that defines why having a money conversation and, and understanding money is so difficult. We're taught an employee life, not a corporate life. And I'll explain right. that. So an employee life is just like you said, a good education, get a good job. You know, for a long time, it was the 401k 2008, 9, 10 blew that apart. Oh, but that wasn't strong enough. We needed the pandemic to even make that a little, you know, harsher. Um, and the school system is not daycare and it's not going to be designed. And and I'm a firm believer the school system is not where financial literacy is supposed to be. Financial literacy is a family decision. If you don't want to be a millionaire, even though the name of my you know, book coming out is Make Your Kids Millionaire, be a hundred thousandaire. Be a financially literate, responsible family. This isn't about raising you know, little brats. And you know, Tom, as you and I talked a little bit about it, um, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of, of education. I, I have a master's degree. My son is getting a double bachelor's in three weeks from Georgia Southern. I'll be down in Georgia on May 10th, the same day my book comes out, which his book is about him. And then he's going on for a master's in accounting and going on to be a CPA. And he still says, mom, I have never, ever, ever, ever two degrees and will come a master's CPA been taught the entrepreneur corporate life of running life like you taught us and how we lived it. We lived entrepreneurially. We lived through corporate life, meaning we had LLCs, C corps. Right, the minute uh, Logan was born, this is 1999. He became an employee of my company. I read all about it in the book. He became an employee of my company. Became a model. I got a Roth IRA. Um, you know, as he's 18, he joined me as a partner. At 18 years old into an LLC. So now I, he's not only my son; he's my partner, and I'm raising him that way. I have a daughter that's 15. Same thing. So. Back to, you know, get a good job and have a good education. Yes. And 
the way the wealthy do it. I think, you know, Tom, when we, when we were talking about this, there's a lot of the education that's out there that stops at that, that's good, that, like that's good enough. How wealthy people live, clearly how millionaires live is a living corporate life. Their companies make money. They use the brilliance of our 81,000 pages tax code of the United States, 81,000 pages of code. And our kids, I always make this joke, Kevin, I always say, you know, if you don't have kids, you should get them their tax deductions if you do it right. So <laughs> I, have I, fun I know that kids. very well and acutely. Thank you. I, yes. have, I have a lot of fun with, I do have a lot of fun teaching it because I want to have, I'd say humor be part of it, but also it's not difficult to do what I did. I raised millionaire kids. I traveled them around the world with me as a single mom two kids. Um, my co-author, I do need to bring him in. He's an Air Force fighter pilot, retired lieutenant colonel. He did his family financial literacy very differently. One, you know, one marriage, two kids, traveled only a few continents, and then was an Air Force fighter pilot, had a job for 25 years. So the book is about two families and how we did it, but we all did it in corporate life, meaning you can have a job. Like I have a lot of clients that have jobs, but their real wealth is coming from additional entrepreneurial efforts, kids' entrepreneurial efforts. The book is just steeped with how to have your kids at four years old. My, com my kids started companies and they started little businesses, little 21st century lemonade stands, I call them. Yeah. Right. Wow. Wow. I, I love that. Uh, I, I just got a question for, for you on this. You mm -hmm. know, when we talk about parents and our kids, I did a lot of research on finances, as you know, in, in the Ziegler yeah. world, we have the wheel of life and the financial spoke and the wheel life. If, if we're going to have a balanced life, it's got to okay. be solid, right? It's got to be something that allows us to do the things we want to do. And all my research, all the people who are the experts on financial wellness, none of them said that you should have a clearly defined why or purpose as your number one thing. And so as a parent, we want to raise good adults how do yep. we talk to our kids about why we want to have money? So I think you talk about why you want to have money from a mission driven place. That's how I do it. When my kids were, again, four, three and four is really when I started bringing a lot of financial literacy and uh, we do it every holiday and we would set goals and we would look back at the last year and what goals were there. And then I early on said, I'm, I'm not the bank. I'm not the mom. I, I want something. To, I want to go to the store. It's how could we create money? What could you do? I mean, there was just a financial conversation about, you know, a very mission driven life. I mean, I, you know, I think we all have gifts and talents and I have this amazing gift of teaching and advocating for financial literacy for families. And I've done it all over the world. And my kids know that generational wealth for them is, is one of our big whys because it's never happened in our family. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also to give back. And we've been heavily involved in charities and uh, giving back to different families. And um, so I think the why is inherent in it. So, you know, if I didn't scream up from the rooftops, I can tell you the one thing I say loudly to people who's, who I'm always asked, you know, the millionaires that sustain themselves as millionaires, what's the difference between those and those that roller coaster in and out of millionaire status, I said, it's a mission driven life. Like I'm living a mission beyond myself. It's not about my needs and my, my food and shelter. Like that's, that's over. Now it's about how many lives can I serve? Right. And so for Logan, you know, as he's becoming a CPA, we're in those conversations and how many lives and how, and the kind of, you know, impact he can make. So values and character and life skills have always just been a part of my parenting. Just a lot of that is because who I've, spend time with, who I was mentored by. I mean, 19 years old, Bob Proctor becomes my mentor. I mean, you kind of get the rest of how I kind of, yeah. <laughs> how I got to know, you know, your father and how I got to know, you know, from Les Brown to, to some of the greatest, you know, people that have walked the planet. Um, so, so it's instilled in there, but I agree with you. I think that the conversation about money uh, is still kind of projected that it should go to the school system. And I, I cannot a thousand percent disagree. It is a family decision. It's a family's choice to have generational wealth. Generational wealth ends statistically at 2.3 generations. I think I was telling you, Tom, when we were talking before the podcast, I mean, there are three billionaire families and they're in their third generation and they're all breaking up. Every trust is breaking up. All of it's falling apart. The assets are being sold at ridiculous discounts and everybody's gonna go off with their little crumb because there wasn't financial literacy and the bigger why we're having this. I mean, is this isn't just about having, you know, whether it's a million, 10 million, 100 million, what's it for and who's it serving and what's its purpose? And if that doesn't get into the literacy of the family and the, 
the um, the DNA of the family, things fall apart. All right, well, and money can be used for bad things, but money can be used, as we all know, for amazing things. Let's start at that root you talked about, the entrepreneur versus corporate. I mean, not but employee versus corporate, okay. which is, I think for most people listening, including me, that's not really the common vernacular. We think employee oh. versus entrepreneur, period. And you even say somewhere in the book, first and foremost, parents need to have their own business. So right away, right, people are going to, and I know you already spoke to this just a tad, but I want you to more because a lot yeah. of people are going to hear, wait a minute, I, I don't have my own business. I just spent the weekend. I was telling Tom, mountain biking with a bunch of guys around my age, 50 and over, all of them have done really uh -huh. well financially. Yeah. I was actually surprised that the majority, uh, actually all but one were in employee roles, worked with companies. Now they were at the high end, they got stock options and they had some of those things, but they weren't entrepreneurs. And I'm used to that, especially with guys that are off, you know, gallivanting around in the mountains like that. They usually have the freedom from that. Uh, but a little yeah. surprised. So but again, they, they really liked what they did. So for them to hear that, their first thought might be, gosh, I don't actually technically own my own business like the three of us here do. Right. How do they adopt do they, yep. that? Okay. So they can invest in real estate. They can have other companies as they educate their kids. Um, I've, had, I've been on Barbara Walters with Millionaire Kids. And the way that that worked is either the mother or the father quit their job, started the LLC, the S Corp, the C Corp, whatever it was. Um, that little uh, bottle, bottle, those little bottle cap uh, company that became a jewelry company, which became a million dollar company is one of my clients. Um, she became a millionaire, but the parent at 18, you know, ha you have to be 18 to have a company. So to me, the entrepreneurial venture st uh, stems from the kids for sure. Um, if you want to do it on a small scale, the kids can make $12,550 before they have to file a tax return. Now you can look at that as a parent and be a, a high income earner. I have a lot of high income earner employees and their business is with their family, right? And that way they can do the, the family deductions. They can do the corporate deductions. They can write up their car. They can write up their cell phones. They have a legal reason to do that because they're having a company. The other way that I did it very aggressively with Logan is we bought a lot of real estate. So when he was born, you know, I had LLCs that owned real estate, gas and oil, other assets. So on your asset side of protection, you can keep your job and have those be the LLCs where then you get the deductions, you can write through the business trips um, and do it all that way. But that structure then those corporations held in trust, which then keeps you out of probate is how you preserve the generational wealth. And, and that, that's, so critical. that's so what's going to be so yeah, it's going to be so new for people to hear because it is. For me as well. Now, being an entrepreneur and being someone who advocates that, the first thing I tell people is go get incorporated so you can get all your ducks in a row. And, and, and it's amazing. I still find so many people, and I'm sure there's a lot, listen to this show, don't feel bad. You're in good company who are out there. You have a side gig, a side hustle. You have something you're doing it, and you are not incorporated. You're not uh, you're not citing the miles you drive, the expenses that you uh, put in place. And so can that's, I, that's significant can right I, can there. I that's tell a them, thing. Can I tell them all the reasons why that's not helpful yeah. <laughs> at all? <laughs> well, first of all, your social security number uh, goes with that side hustle, that sole proprietor, that sole prop, which means all you get is a schedule C. So you get a tiny little, call it 2030, if you have a really good accountant stretching the tax code. You don't get officer and director benefits. You don't get to employ your kids. You don't get a solo 401k, your own Roth IRA. I mean, there are so many benefits to the deductions that you get mm -hmm. when you live corporate life. And, you know, there's a lot of accountants, and I'm going to take a little swing at them gently, uh, that say you don't need to be incorporated unless you make $100,000. And I say, mm, being incorporated is about a lifestyle. It's living corporate life. Like when people say, what do you do, Laurel? I said, I teach people how to live corporate life. It's a lifestyle. It's not a program. It's not like you're going to join me for a year and I'm going to teach you how to get incorporated, get a trust and get this stuff set up. And then I'm going to leave you. There's a lifestyle to how to do it. Right. And as my kids got older, you know, the dedication of my book, um, I have to share, share it with you. It's really, it's kind of a cute little dedication Kyle and I did. Uh, so we dedicated it to our four children. I have two and he has two. And uh, I'm just going back to it. It's really funny. Sorry. It's taking me a little second to get there. Um, but essentially, uh, what does it say? It says, this is dedicated to our four children, Logan Langmire, Tristan Langmire, Vice Beckman, and Brett Beckman. 
They survived our parenting experiments and an occasional blunders and still turned out amazing and responsible. So yeah. we, we did try a lot. We had them be entrepreneurs, but under my LLC, um, Logan tried all sorts of stuff. I mean, he did a smoothie business. He was a ski instructor. He shoveled snow. My daughter uh, did jewelry. She loves to do videography, but that's under an LLC. So instead of capping her at $12,550, I, I take the tax burden. I have the, the corporate structure. I have the LLC that I know. And now get this, sole proprietors, you got to hear this. When my kids are 18, when Logan's 18, we had 18 years of corporate history. That means corporate credit. So in addition to my social security number, I have corporate credit. Now he has corporate credit. And then he joined another LLC that has more real estate in it. So now he's just joining straight into the generational wealth that I've been building. But to be 18 years old and take on an 18 year old company. And like I told Tom, you know, we talked about this. I probably, I know I'm on the more aggressive side of using the tax code and I have an amazing team. Um, that I put around, you know, my clients and us, but that's, a, it's a very different way to live. And we're not even taught that we're not even taught. It's an option. You know, I think in sixth and seventh grade, we should be taught that age, like that kind of an age is, do you want to be an employer? Do you want to be an entrepreneur? And look at now, I mean, with the NFTs, with cryptocurrency, the amount of gaming, I mean, kids are hired as hackers right now. Um, my, my teenage daughter, 15 years old is getting hired to be a teenage advisor to a new gaming bank. That'll be a bank for kids. 15 years old because she's going to give you know feedback on the avatars and the female version of it. There's so much that our kids are, they're geniuses and they're generating and they're going to solve problems for this next generation. And it is our job, I think, as the parent to really bring them through that. And if you don't use the corporate structure and you say a sole proprietor, you're just, you're losing so many benefits that are just sitting out there. They're so available for you. And to give your kid an 18 year old gift of a corporation that has had in our case, millions of dollars running through it. I mean, Logan got immediate credit, great credit, great credit cards, and it set him for life. You know, when I was in my 20s and went through my master's degree, I, I was what, 22 and over $100,000 of student loan debt. I mean, I remember that burden and thinking, and when I'm a parent, I, I, I just, there's gotta be a way to do this differently. This cannot be such a burden to like start life behind eight ball. And it was a big eight ball, it was like six figure eight ball. Like, how do, how do I even earn out of this when I, you know, I did go out and get a job and then I thought, well, heck with that. I got to go do something else. Met Bob Proctor and learned entrepreneurialism. So the book is very, very aggressive towards living corporate life. I'll admit yeah. it freely and I'm not embarrassed about it. If, if parents are out there listening and say, that's just too much, then I would say, start with one, start small. Like Kevin, you have nine kids, start with one LLC. All the kids can have their businesses inside of one. Just start small, go get a rental property together. That's super fun. Another business, I bought uh, laundromats with my kids. Do you know how fun a laundromat is for kids to go get coins and count the coins? And um, when my kids were like eight and 14, we bought a pizzeria. And, uh, and I love flipping little service-based companies. And so we got in there and we flipped the pizzeria. But they were right side by side with me. You know, they were learning databases. They were learning how people buy. They were learning cogs. They were learning taxes. And your kids are brilliant. And I think too many times people leave their kids home. They put them in the school system and say, I hope this whole thing works out. Yeah. And then they wonder why it doesn't. So yeah. this is really a parenting book at a lot of levels of responsibility. So I'm going to... I'll let you ask the next question, Kevin, but I just wanted to give like a little testimonial from a daddy's heart. Uh, my daughter got married last year in January and they bought a house um, and they got lucky on the timing. They, they went in in May, right after the pandemic, all the housing prices were down. They put some money down on a house. It was a new build. And by the time they moved in, it was, they had 30% equity, wow. but I get, I bet I get this text. And it said, thanks, daddy. And I'm like, for what? And she said, when we got our loan, the mortgage broker had never seen credit that, that good for somebody my age. Hmm. And so, you know, that's, that's hundreds of dollars a month in a house, right? And, and how you're able to go on with life. And it was a simple choice, a simple decision that we made. So, testimonial for there. I'll throw it back to you, Kevin, but I just wanted to. Well, and, and I want to go to the root of that again. We uh, go back to the, you know, the kids go get a, a good job and make some money. And I do feel like the, and you know, this, the consummate perspective that we look at is go make some money, go make X amount, 
live under your means. Don't spend it all. Save what you can. I know. I see you rolling your eyes right. Save what I you had can. To. I couldn't even control it. I, I, couldn't I know. I know. It. <laughs> but that is. But that is where we are. We are not literate to the degree you're talking about. Like my kids are incredibly literate in health and wellness. That's something that I live out every day. I know it well. I'm an advocate of. We walk it out in the ho- in the house. They're actually even uh, very literate in being an entrepreneur and doing a business and understanding profit and loss, but by financially literate, not a great skill, which is why you're on the show, not a great skill set of mine. So they are not. And it's still under the, Hey, make enough money. They did. They made money, bought a car, make sure you got enough and you're making enough to pay for the repairs, to pay your insurance. And now let's look towards some bigger things, but it's still there. It's not a corporate life. That is what I feel like is such a paradigm shift for people. And even coming to the point of you talking and you can get into this, passive income. I mean, it's still something that we reserve for the top, even entrepreneurs, you know that how many of them actually, and I'm going to read what you said. Passive income is just a fancy way of saying money that comes in automatically with little to no effort required to achieve it. This will almost always come from assets and investments. If we look at even our aspiring business-minded audience, how many of them have passive income it's even a quarter of their monthly revenue, probably very, very few. And yet this is your entire life. My entire life. Yeah. So, so I'm just going to go back and I'll put some pieces. Living corporate life, I think is an intention. It's not a number. So for those accountants who say you have to make a hundred thousand to do it, it's not, it's a way that you're going to live your life. And at 18 years old, when my daughter's 18, she's going to get that LLC for her birthday. And that that's, if you hear that, that springs them into amazing credit from how to do credit applications. Um, And then they start doing entrepreneurial things. So even while Logan was in school, so he went to uh, school to finance and accounting, and he also went on a football scholarship, there was still, you know, extra that he, you know, needed to pay for. And he is a starting center, he's five, six, five and 290 pounds. So he eats a lot. So his food bill on the, in addition to his scholarship was enormous. And we figured out it was like $700 a month. And I'm like, well, what do we want to do to make money? And he's, he's amazing at math. So he started a math tutoring business on the side and that went into his company. And then when I go out, like I'm going out this weekend, I do a lot of pro bono, pro bono work for kids. Like kids are my heart and soul, obviously writing the book, but also like, I'm going to go teach the Georgia Southern men football team. Uh, Friday, I have an hour and a half and Monday, I have an hour and a half. And I've got eight hour and a half sessions. Guess what the first session I'm going to have with these men that are going to walk into Georgia Southern employee life. The first, the first, the first slide up and there's a slide in the, in the book, employee life or corporate life. You have a choice. And it's an, and is the answer. If you want to be employed, great. But if you don't live the entrepreneurial corporate life and have some entrepreneurial venture, it doesn't have to be full-time. It could be a side hustle. Like my, my, my son made thousands of dollars tutoring incredible incredible amount and because he's a student athlete he gets nil name image and light list that actually goes into your corporation so i teach these men and i've been doing this my second year down at georgia southern and the coaches love it um a lot of these men they're setting up like todd for example todd set up an llc he is in construction management um i have a construction company in kansas i do a lot of real estate in the midwest and so we actually invited him out he got a three credit um internship this spring he spent 10 days in kansas walking as an owner right side by side with my partner seeing what does it what's it like to own a construction company not from the eyes of being the employee but this is we actually drew the corporate structure you know we said there's a company that owns the real estate there's the company that owns the construction there's a company that owns the equipment there's a company that owns the distribution his eyes were like it takes seven corporations to run this. I said, if you want the best tax advantages, but for a kid at 19, 20 years old to see that, to see the truth of how a corporate life lives, I just love that. I mean, our community offers so many internships like that where kids can see, yeah, you might want to be employed for a while, right? I was employed at Chevron for a little minute, but being an entrepreneur is, is a lifestyle. And you really, if you want to live it thoroughly and have corporate, every corporation you own, you can have corporate credit. So not only do you have your own personal credit, you sole proprietors, you get corporate credit, corporate credit, corporate credit. So when people said they can't find money or they have a hard time getting funding, it's because you don't even know it's available. See, Kevin and Tom, I don't think, I don't think it's, um, it's just not available. I, I wouldn't say that people are ignorant to it. It's, it's like the alternative. So if you look at uh, medicine and, and health and wealth, right? Uh, health and wealth, most people that just go to the hospital in Western medicine, 
probably don't live the healthiest lives. They put a lot of alternatives, right? From how they eat to other alternative you know, modalities. And I see it's the same with wealth, with wealth. And I'm not talking about just getting by. I'm talking about wealth. I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of heirs, if not millionaires or big million, multimillionaires. You're living corporate life and you're living in the alternatives. You're not just living traditional, go park your money in a financial institute and pray to God, they're going to help you get it all done. That's not what, how it works. You know, you get, you kind of fall in love with being an entrepreneur and, well, and, and partnering with other entrepreneurs. And to your point with passive income, the pattern that I teach and is the one that we have to break is we're taught to make spend to make spend. Right. We have to change the pattern at, at kids age, make and invest. And now save. I, I use the word invest intentionally because I want them to start learning when you put your money to work and go grab a compounding power calculator. Just, I mean, if all you did with your kids, this is my simplest example in the book. When my kids were born, they got employed. Um, I paid them $500 a month. Why? Because I could put that into a Roth IRA. And if all I did was fund their Roth for 20 years at $6,000 a year, invested properly, I have set them on a journey of a lifetime. A, they can't touch it until they're older. It's hundreds of thousands, if not millions, in the way that you invested it. Like we did ours in cryptocurrency. So you can imagine it's a lot of money that landed in their Roth tax-free, tax-deferred. So, I mean, I bring up, I, I, I don't leave a stone unturned on how I did all these strategies. Well, and that's, it's, yeah, that is in your book. That's it in your book. And I, and I want people to go get the right book here. The, yeah, the, to learn how to invest it and what to do okay. with the money. I do know because I've heard feedback from people. I talk about my kids. We do a lot at farmer's market. You talked about that. It's not people are ignorant, but they don't even know where to do it. That's been a really neat one uh, yep. for us. And I think a lot of people hear about their kid doing a business. They think, gosh, I'm going to get them some online business. I don't even know that world. Our little local farmer's market in our little town has a young entrepreneur's uh, program. It's $5 a week for a booth. They really advocate for the kids. And I had them do things that I yep. knew. It doesn't mean it was the most lucrative, but we live on a bunch of land. We got a bunch of trees. I know how to do some wood stuff. They made lamps. They made candle holders. They cool. made shelves. Yep. They made signs, whatever. I was roasting coffee for a long time. So I had a kid roast coffee. Uh, another one started face painting. Actually ended up being the most lucrative thing any of the kids have ever done. She's done a lot of uh, big events like 4th of July events and whatnot. And she'll clear seven, 800 bucks. And her cost is a little bit of paint and no prep. Um, so that's a great way to do it. Now it's an investment. I mean, in all this, we're talking about, you keep talking about investment. It is an investment as a parent. If the school's yeah. not going to do it, uh, there's no other place that's going to do it. And so Fridays during the summer, I'm not working much, or if I'm talking with Tom, I'm sitting over there at a booth uh, under a tent at the farmer's market. And that is a big issue. But how many people do that with sports already? They're putting yep. a lot of time in there. And, you know, with that, even looking at what do you think about the, as I've had my kids get older and some of them go into things, I found opportunities where instead of them signing on to do X for whatever job they're looking at yep. to see what's the opportunity of you doing it as an independent contractor. Okay. Thank you. hundred percent. And, and like these, like these athletes, I want to go back to the Georgia Southern men. Cause I love like, you know, I'm leaving them on Friday. They're going to have homework assignment over the weekend. They have their spring game on my, on Saturday. And then if their parents come in and want to talk to me, cause some of their parents are going to go like, oh, what's this crazy woman saying to my kid, you know, so yeah. I'll be around to answer questions and calm them all down that this is all legal and it's all fine. We're just not taught. This is different, yeah. but some of them are personal trainers. Like I told some of the quarterbacks, you know, in the summer, I mean, you're a hero to get to college level sports. You're a hero in your town, go back and do like quarterback training, speed training, personal training. Right. I have one guy, Tyler, who created this beautiful nutrition book and he's helps kids with nutrition. And now that's out on the internet and he has a, a Shopify store. I have another one that just designs cool t-shirts. Another one designs websites. Like the business doesn't have to be, like you said, this thriving, you know, huge business, but it does have to be an intent to make money, right? According to the IRS, you have to have a legal intent to make money to do the deductions properly. I, and then I have a very simple business plan, takes about three hours to do, has them really think through just basic operational, you know, tactics on the business, basic marketing, basic, you know, sales, and get a little business up at 18 years old and make money. I mean, if you and don't have mom and dad be the bank, like we always had, you know, mom mentoring sessions, you know, they'd come and say, all right, time for the newest, you know, 
you know, widget, whatever it is, iPhone or whatever they wanted, a game thing. And I would say, all right, well, how are you going to make the money? Let's brainstorm. What are, what are some different ways? My son was a nationally ranked skier. So he was only charging like 75 bucks an hour. I said, Logan, at Heavenly Mountain, which is right up here where we live, pros get 350. You're not that age, but you're close. So at least go to 150 an hour. He got it all day long. He got it all day long, 150 an hour to go ski instruct for people and just put a little ad out in the paper. So it is what you know. So like you said, Kevin, I'm glad you brought that up. It is what you know. It doesn't have to be something fancy. And the other thing I always say is uh, let the kids experiment on a lot of things. Don't get them locked into one thing at a young age. Like maybe they want to, you know, do some cooking, maybe make that catering and you'll make more money. Babysitting called nanny and you make more money. Some kids love to clean houses. Some kids love to clean garages. I mean, I don't know what you love to do, but just start. It's the whole, it's the principle of just bringing entrepreneurial spirit and that energy and that knowledge into it and make it a choice. And like my sons have a CPA. He's going to have to go get a job. He'll go work for one of the big five for a while. And then he'll probably come back and run our family office, right? He'll be yeah. our CPA, but he'll go do a job. I, I, you know, I'm not opposed to that, but to live, to leave, to leave corporate life over here, like you don't know it exists is probably what, you know, I have the most passion about is it's just not taught. It's not given a choice until you kind of stumble into it. And then there's no one really teaching how to be a good entrepreneur and then how to invest money very well. So it gets just bumpy for people. So you know, I'm going to ask, I want to ask you to give some, I guess I, my thought is some compassion to the parents who are out there because my kids, I, I've been, you know, I grew up with an entrepreneurial dad. They've seen me that they, they understand it and they value it. They do have awareness of friends who their parents, you kept saying that are the bank. And I can hear, I know that you see the benefit of this, just like I see the benefit in helping my kids understand health and wellness. And no, we're not going to have pop tarts or whatever other kids have for breakfast. But I understand that that's hard because they all are, yep. they all are eating junk at lunch and we're sending you with, you know, falafel or something like that, which is, a, can be even a little embarrassing. So here we have parents, well-meaning parents, especially those who had hardship in their, in their childhood, maybe who have done something well, financially, they want to provide for their kids. They want to give this to their yep. kids. Even though I grew up like you did, you want that $400 BMX bike and start racing bikes. Well, how can we help you earn that. My dad bought an old motorcycle. We, I I'm doing quotes on the video here. We redid it. I'm sure he probably did 75% of it. He made me feel like I was doing it. I did enough that it was hard work and I sweated and it was irritating, but man, I wanted that bike. And I love the value. And I realized that as I got older, the value I had for that over other kids yet still here we are in a culture that, you know, is more, I'm going to guess uh, Laurel, you, you know, better than I do more than ever our parents, the bank for everything from every little game yep. that the kids want to yep. college, to the car. And now we have, uh, I don't, I haven't looked at stats lately, the boomerang kids who are coming back living at home and the parents are the bank and probably even feel like that's, they're being good parents. They feel like it. So I, I do have compassion for them and I actually have a system for them. So, um, can I talk about the book a little bit? Please. Right. So the Make Your Kids Millionaires is coming out May 10th, the week of M Mother's Day. In the pre-order, I'm giving $1,500 of bonuses. So one of the bonuses solves the very problem you're asking about. When Logan was four and when my daughter was four, we start a, a little system called Never Pay Your Kids an Allowance. So I have a whole system for you parents and you're going to wean them off. <laughs> you're going to wean them off and not allow an allowance. And instead, um, I have just you, you have to assign what well, I call it house chores. I mean, everybody lives, just for living here, you have to do a certain amount of things, right? So what's that list of things? And that's independent to every family. Then how much money do you want to make a month? And I have task lists. And so what you do is you sit with your child, age appropriate, and you design tasks. What could you do to make extra money? And then you negotiate. And now you have this lovely thing called the internet. So you go look up what the prices are. Like what do other people make doing that same thing. So if you're going to hire somebody to shovel snow, for example, because we're in the Lake Tahoe area. So normally, like if I did an annual contract, that's 800 to a thousand dollars to shovel snow for the season. Well, Logan picked that up right away. He's like, I'll go do it. I'll go. I, I want that one. Don't hire somebody. I want that chore. Um, same with landscaping. I mean, so you, you come up with a list of tasks, you negotiate what that's worth, which is super fun. Right. Because I and I have fun with it. Don't get into argument with your kid. Have fun with it. Have them go negotiate. Well, what do you think it's worth? And then, you know, you come up with a reasonable rate 
And then there's a whole nother sheet that comes with part of that course that is what's their monthly income and they get to design their monthly income. So instead of mom and dad becoming the bank, it's a transition of off of an allowance. So I'd say, you know, give yourself 30, 60, 90 days to say, we're not going to do it this way anymore. Right. And I'm a huge fan of games. So if you see, I have a millionaire maker game up above. So I was the, I was the master distributor for Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game for five years. So that's kind of how I walked into yeah. this you know, world. So I always tell parents, go grab Monopoly. If you have cash flow, grab cash flow. Go get my Millionaire Maker game. You can get on my store and start playing games. I have a huge YouTube channel, 10 minutes every morning. And then just start the conversation. Like, what are you learning? Like, I have, I don't have, I have thousands of families that they'll, that part of their dinner conversation is, well, what did you hear on Laurel's YouTube channel about credit, about debt, about what you do to make money? So I feel like I'm arming people with, a financial filing cabinet and never pay your kids an allowance, all the worksheets to kind of move them away from allowance to get the kids to be entrepreneurial. And if they're super, super like stubborn and say, nope, I want mom and dad to do it. Well, then there's some consequences you're going to have to put in. You know, there's a group of people buying this book that are older, 60, 70, 80, that have millions that are going to hand to what now they're seeing is like, oh my gosh. And I said, don't judge yourself because they said, oh my gosh, we did a bad job parenting. So we're going to our, our 20 and 30, 40 year old kids don't know it. And I said, you know what? Even though it says make your kids millionaires, pick up the book. I don't care if you're 20, go back to it. it the, it's age appropriate. There's zero to five. Chapter four is zero to five. Chapter six is six to eight. And then nine to 11, right? All the way up to 18. What could have, should have you done? Doesn't matter if you did it or not. Now, what do you want? And take, make some selections. And see all the choices that no one I don't think has ever talked about. It's really, really nitty gritty. I mean, it's well, really the last thing I, I do want to ask you to hit on real quick is you do take a lot of the folks listening to this show are going to have the anti credit and credit card mindset. And you yep. do take a stance on that. You even say another difference between business owners and employees is that business owners realize debt isn't necessarily bad. In fact, using other people's money to help you make more money is critical. Speak to that because that's going to go counter to a lot of what these folks have been taught. Oh yeah. They've been taught not to have credit cards. So I'll start with, and this is my Monday talk with the Georgia Southern men, the difference between a debit card and a credit card. So a debit card is money right out of your bank, right? And if you go to an ATM, you're paying a ridiculous fee for your own money. It doesn't even make sense. Use a credit card, low interest responsibly, and you pay it off every month. You're using the bank's money for 30 days you're inspiring better credit for yourself. And then if you have a corporation and you do the same thing, now you have good credit for you. See, credit is based on money inside the financial system. So say you have four cards. Another mistake no one talks about, you don't pay off those cards all at one time. Pay off card one, week one, week two, then put, get money back in the system. Say you, that's your Discover card. And, and I teach this to kids. I'll say, okay, let's get a Discover, American Express, a Visa, and a and MasterCard. Just call it that. And let's assign them to very specific things so you can keep track of your money cleanly. One's assigned to gas. One's assigned to food. One's assigned to you know extra things you might need for college supplies. Um, you know, one's kind of for their fun. Um, but you know, keep. I don't call it a budget. I call it a forecast. Keep limits pay it off every month, be super responsible, their credit will soar, right? Just using your debit card does nothing for your credit, right? It has you feel good. Right. It's like you're, and, and I'm not talking about that. That's kind of the lower end of just using responsible credit cards and keeping your credit and your corporate credit high. When I'm talking about good debt, I'm talking about a lot of debt. So for example, I'll use an example. I bought um, a laundromat. And I went to the bank because I know how the banking system works. And I said, I have put a lot of money in your bank. I know how much money you have been able to get on loans. So I would like $200,000 for, and I'd like it at a very, very low interest rate. And they laughed. And I said, take it to committee and just have that conversation. So they came back to me and said, you know, well, Laurel, you already have 200,000, use your money. I said, no, I want my 200,000 uh, out doing what it's doing in real estate, making 18, 20%. So my money's making money. I want to use your money. And they gave me a 2% loan for three years. Wow. So I use the bank's money, 2%, responsibly paid it back. So I'm not talking about crazy stuff, but most people just don't even know how to use the basics of the system, you know? So, so I got to keep my apartments and kept doing my thing in real estate. And I used the bank's money and I got these laundry mats. I used them for a while. Um, it was, a, and I only did it really because I thought it was a really fun kid's business and it's a real one. It was fun for my kids to drive by and say, yeah, we own that, you know, and, and people like wash their clothes. I and mean, there's so much about life you can teach kids through just drive through town. Somebody owns 
every piece of real estate right. in every business in town. Right. So start having those conversations. Even if you're an employee, you can engage, go get some partners in town. You don't have to be the sole owner. You can partner in with other people just to get started to start living this corporate life. I promise you, I'll be right here. The website on June 1 is going to flip into a complete resource guide checklist, um, call, basically a call center. We're going to call in for questions. Um, let us help you live corporate life and get this in your family. Your kids need it. My gosh, the, uh, what our kids have to endure, the problems they have ahead of them to solve, I think us three know, they're, they're massive problems, massive world problems. And we need really responsible kids out there to help. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time to be with us. Thanks for putting this out there. I'm, uh, I'm eager to talk with my kids. Laurel, appreciate it. Thank, Welcome, you, thank you so much. Excited Thanks about you your much. book. Thank you.